Have you ever wondered what sparked the infamous Salem witch trials? The year was 1692, colonial Massachusetts, a time of uncertainty, and fear was rife. Salem Village was a community in turmoil, fraught with existing rivalities and a constant influx of refugees from regions torn apart by war. These tensions were further heightened by the strange, unexplainable behavior of two young girls, the daughter and niece of Reverend Samuel Paris. They were diagnosed with bewitchment by the village doctor, a verdict that sent shockwaves through the village. This was the spark that ignited the fire of paranoia, as the girls blamed three women for afflicting them with witchcraft. Suddenly, witchcraft seemed not just possible, but present and threatening. The villagers, already on edge due to the socio-political unrest and the constant threat of attack by warring tribes, found themselves caught up in a hysteria that quickly escalated into a full-blown witch hunt. And thus, the stage was set for one of the darkest chapters in American history. In the face of fear and paranoia, the Salem witch trials escalated rapidly. The establishment of the special court of Oyer and Terminer marked a turning point in the trials. This court, presided over by Chief Justice William Stoughton, became the stage for the grim drama of accusations, interrogations, and condemnations. The court accepted spectral evidence, a controversial form of testimony based on dreams and visions. This allowed the accusers to claim that they saw the apparitions of the witches harming them or others. Such intangible evidence, heavily criticized even then, played a significant role in sealing the fate of many. As the trials progressed, the gallows claimed an increasing number of lives. 19 men and women were hanged, one man was pressed to death, and several others died in prison. The echoes of their pleas of innocence were drowned out by the cries for justice from a community gripped by fear. These trials were not simply a manifestation of fear of the unknown. They were fueled by religious extremism, social tensions, and rivalries in Salem Village. Every dispute, every disagreement, every difference could lead to an accusation of witchcraft, creating a vicious cycle of fear and retribution. The trials served as a grim reminder of the destructive power of fear and paranoia. As abruptly as they started, the Salem witch trials came to an end. The engine of this hysteria, the special court of Oyer and Terminer, was dissolved in the autumn of 1692. The court had been responsible for the execution of 20 people, but the growing skepticism about its proceedings led to its downfall. One of the key reasons for this skepticism was the use of spectral evidence, testimonies of victims claiming to see spirits or apparitions of the accused afflicting them. This form of evidence based solely on personal experiences and visions was denounced, prompting a shift in the tide. In its place, the Superior Court of Judicature took over. This court was different. It disallowed spectral evidence, leading to a significant decrease in convictions. Consequently, many of the accused witches who had been awaiting their trials were released. But the final blow to the witch hunt came from the top. Governor William Phipps, disturbed by the trial's impact on his wife and the community, issued a general pardon in 1693. This act freed all those who were still imprisoned on charges of witchcraft, officially bringing the trials to a halt. Yet the damage had been done, leaving a deep scar on the community. The aftermath of the trials was a community in ruins, mourning the loss of their loved ones and grappling with the guilt of their actions. The end of the witch hunt marked not a victory, but a sobering realization of the devastation that fear and hysteria could wreak. In the aftermath of the trials, Salem was left to reflect on its dark past. The echoes of the witch hunt reverberated through the town, a chilling reminder of a time when fear and suspicion ruled. Those involved, burdened by the weight of their actions, confessed their errors and guilt. The trials fueled by hysteria and xenophobia were later declared unlawful. As the years passed, the shadows of this haunting episode began to lift. In 1957, Massachusetts issued a formal apology for the witch trials, acknowledging the grave injustice served to the accused. The wheels of justice, albeit slow, continued to turn until July of 2022, when Elizabeth Johnson Jr., the last convicted witch, was officially pardoned, her name cleared from the stains of the past. Remembrance took shape in the form of memorials dedicated to the victims of the witch trials. These silent stone narratives stand as a testament to the lives lost, whispering stories of a time when fear clouded judgment. The Salem Witch Trials, a chilling episode of history, continue to serve as a stark reminder of the dangers of hysteria, prejudice, and a miscarriage of justice.